let us now ask a very non trivial question and this question we have picked from the textbook discrete and combinatorial mathematics by ralph p grimaldi and the treatment of uh, this concept called rook polynomials in the book is very good and we would want you all to refer to the textbook for all the notations and uh, um, other if you want to solve more problems this book is the uh, best possible book that we can recommend you um, as part of this course so look at this uh, word example from the book look at this chess board here having 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 cells what is the rook polynomial of this particular chess board that that sounds very difficult to compute of course the coefficient of x is easy to compute that which is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 cells so it will be 1 plus 8x but what is the coefficient of x square by that we mean in how many ways can you place two non taking rooks on this chessboard that's very difficult but there is a surprisingly very elegant way of solving this problem by breaking this onto smaller chunks you will see what i mean as we proceed slowly with this problem now look at this chessboard with 4 with 4 plus 4 8 cells right now i need to compute the rook polynomial of this chessboard let me mark this one first cell let me put a star there and let me ask this question the total number of ways in which you can place k rooks on this chessboard is the total number of ways in which you can place one rook in this particular cell the starred cell one rook is definitely there and the rest k minus 1 will be in other places this is case 1 and case 2 is there is no one rook in this cell all k rooks are kept in the other seven cells these are mutually exclusive events so if i want to count the total possible ways in which you can place k rooks on this chessboard i can count these two cases separately and then add them up with the rule of sum as you can see okay so let's proceed i must warn you people the concept is a little involved you may want to go through it very slowly Okay, step by step and we want to pause and then think a lot before proceeding further. It's no um, uh, story book where you can start from the beginning and then go until the end by just following the words. You may want to interpret and reinterpret some steps as I uh, take you through the solution of this question. What's the question? What is the rook polynomial of this chessboard? That's the question. Okay, so what I will write is let me call this chessboard as C. I'm trying to find the kth coefficient of the rook polynomial. Let us represent this as rk of c. Uh, as I said, the notations are directly taken from the textbook. rk of c will be equal to, now put one rook in this cell, which means you have k minus one possible um, rooks that are to be placed in the smaller chess board which appears like this you see what I've done I've removed the entire column here that's because one rook is kept there that, that's the case I'm discussing right now so this is as good as total number of ways in which you can place k minus one rooks in this smaller chess board let me call it cs okay uh, s for smaller rk minus one of cs plus Right, this is the number k minus 1 rooks in this chessboard CS plus the case where you do not put any rooks in this cell, which means you have k options to be put on this chessboard. How what is a chessboard? It's same as your original C chessboard, but this one cell is removed. Okay, let me call this chessboard as CE. CE means let's say uh, eliminated one cell eliminated just board okay and now this will be simply RK of CE you see RK of C this chess board is RK minus one of CS this chess board plus RK of CE right now what I'll do is I'll multiply X to the K throughout why you will soon realize why I am doing this little trick 
So when I multiply x to the k throughout, I simply get this rk of c times x to the k, which is equal to rk minus 1 cs x to the k plus rk of ce x to the k. Right? Okay. Now I'll take summation running through k equals 1 to n throughout. For k, this k is a fixed k, uh, but I'll run this k from 1, 2, 3 up to n. And that summation will be there throughout. Correct? When I, when I take, uh, see basically it's like taking r, k equals 1, k equals 2, k equals 3 and adding all the equations. You will get summation k equals 1 to n rk of c of x. k is equal to summation k equals 1 to n rk minus 1 of cs times x to the k plus summation k equals 1 to n rk of ce x to the k. Okay, so far so good. Now, this particular equation can be rewritten as, again, I want it to appear more like a polynomial, right? What is missing here? A constant one is missing, right? On the, on the left hand side. So let's fix that. Now look at this. What I'll do is I'll simply write summation k equals 1 to n rkc of x to the k. I'll add one left side. On the right side, I will again add plus 1. So basically I'm adding 1 to both left hand side and right hand side. And then I will take x outside and write this as x times summation rk minus 1 times cs times x to the k minus 1 plus summation rk ce x to the k. Alright. Uh, so what have I done? I have just plucked out x so that the k minus 1, k minus 1, uh, the rk minus 1 here and the polynomial x to the k minus 1, both of them are the same so that I can write it more like a polynomial. Right, And then I add plus 1 on both sides and what do you get? You simply get the root polynomial r of c, comma x is equal to x times r of c s, comma x plus r of c e, comma x. So root polynomial of c is equal to x times root polynomial of c s plus root polynomial of c e. Now what did we just do? What we did is actually magical. You see, we took a bigger chessboard and we asked this question, what is the um, rook polynomial of the bigger chessboard? And we got that the rook polynomial of the bigger chessboard is x times the rook polynomial of a slightly lesser chessboard plus another smaller chessboard, which means we can recursively keep applying this and then make the question smaller and smaller and finally get the answer. Right? We will precisely do that. Now look at this. All I'm saying is rook polynomial of this chessboard, here is the chessboard itself, is equal to x times the rook polynomial of this 5-cell chessboard plus this 7-cell chessboard. Correct? And then this becomes, again, I will divide this particular 5-cell chessboard and I'll apply the formula further on it by keeping a star on this cell. And what I will get is my CS chessboard will be simply two squares like this. And my CE chessboard will be a two cross two square. Similarly, when I put a, a star here for this chessboard, I will get a similar breaking down. So ultimately you will get this X times X times two cell chessboard plus four cell chessboard plus X times two cross two chessboard plus this six cell chessboard. Again, further breaking this down, in the next step, you will observe that we will get a polynomial. So I'll, I'll just directly write the polynomial right now for the smaller chessboards, right? So I, I will I'll now uh, write for two cell chessboard, uh, the polynomial will simply be one plus, um, in how many ways can you place one rook here? Um, so two, so it is one plus two x, that's it. Okay, x times x times 1 plus 2x for this board and for a 2 cross 2 chess board, whatever is the, this is the uh, rook polynomial, I'll write that here and for this chess board, it is again 2 cross 2, so I'll write this polynomial here and what I will do is for this chess board, I will again break it down by putting a star here. Okay, it just again breaks down like this and ideally, I will finally get a big polynomial which looks like this. As you can see the steps, intermediate steps, we are, we are just displaying it, you can verify them. They're very easy, very straightforward. The way, the, you know, how you replace a polynomial, uh, a chessboard with a polynomial, 
simply write down a one plus number of ways in which one rook can be kept times x plus number of times in which two rooks can be kept non ticking rooks of course times x square and so on and multiply and add all of them and finally you will get this as the answer you can check the intermediate steps by staring through this slide you will get 1 plus 8x plus 16x square plus 7x cube which means in this chess board you can place one rook in eight ways two rooks in 16 ways and three rooks in seven ways just observe what happened so far you were given a chess board and you were asked to compute a rook polynomial it sounded very non-trivial a task but you came out with a fantastic formula that breaks your chess board into smaller chess boards right and these smaller chess boards were in no way simple they were just smaller so what you do is you make this smaller one step smaller uh, even further and even if that is complicated you make it even smaller by reapplying the formula recursively and finally the chess boards start appearing smaller and smaller but there are a lot of them but but you don't know but you know very well how to handle them so you replace it by the polynomial corresponding polynomial and multiply and add you will get the final answer right so a, a very powerful counting technique uh, using uh, uh, again simple polynomial arithmetic and you observe that uh, something as not so obvious question as in how many ways can you place rooks on a very small chessboard we will go further and try to see examples where this can be further applied as and always please refer to this chapter called principle of inclusion and exclusion from this book by uh, Ralph P Grimaldi as uh, is given here on this slide um, you, you can even try solving more problems. Uh, we could not find a better book than this when it comes to good exposition uh, on, on the topic of rook polynomials.